Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You are welcome to this awesome moment in this very morning broadcast. My name is Bishop Samuel Osagai. I'm ministering all the way from United Kingdom, Wira, near Liverpool. Uh, it's going to be beautiful. I declare in the name of Jesus that this is the day that the Lord God has made, and you will surely rejoice and be glad in it. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that this is the day that the Lord God has made, and you will rejoice and be glad in it. I declare whatever will not give you joy will not be permitted to manifest in your today. Whatever will not give you happiness is banished from your life today in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that only that which will give you joy, which will brighten your countenance, will be ushered into your life today. Remember that this is the day that the Lord had made. He is the maker of today. Don't ever forget this. That only the maker of a product can comprehensively explain what the product is meant to achieve. Only the maker of a product can explain to all others what the product is meant for. And the scripture have revealed that the maker is the Lord himself. The most high. The one that liveth forever and ever. The God that openeth wide his hands to satisfy the desires of all the living. The God that baited everything into existence. He said this is the day that he has made. And just for you to rejoice. He is so concerned about your joy. And I declare upon somebody listening to me. That only that which will give you joy is permitted to enter your life today. Beginning from this moment, that whatever will not give you joy, that which have been orchestrated from the pit of hell to give you sorrow, bitterness, pain, weeping, crying, mourning, is banished out of your life today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Quickly share this broadcast as many times as possible. Until somebody in, in your contact list is a part of this movement. We'll be talking about the topic abiding in Christ. Abiding in him. We'll be looking at the book of John chapter number 15. If you have your Bibles, you will quickly do well to go to the book of John. John Chapter 15. Wow. I will read from verse 1 to verse 8, and I will also read verse 16. He said, I am the true vine. Jesus talking. He is the true vine. And my father is the husband man. The husband man is like the gardener, the caretaker, the one that takes care of the garden, the vine, to ensure that the vine produces fruit, to ensure that the vine produces what it had originally in his mind, to ensure that the vine produces the fruit that he originally intended when he planted the vine, to ensure that nothing intrudes into the growing process of the vine, to destroy and distort the purpose where he planted the vine. He is the husband man. You can see what God is. Verse 2 of John 15. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. This is explaining quickly the purpose of the branch. You and I, we are the branches Attached to the vine, Jesus Christ is the true vine. And we are branches attached to the true vine. And he is saying the purpose of the branch is to produce fruit. Now you have to know why you were born again. This is very critical. Many don't know why they were born again. 
the purpose of your being born again in Christ, because you are a branch of divine Christ Jesus, is to produce fruit. Now, the vine is not the one that produces the fruit. It is the branches that produces the fruit where you and I have been located. And I pray for you, you can see that God is so concerned about the fruit because the fruit you bear reveals him to the world. Just by seeing the vine, many will be confused. They will not be able to decode the vine because they don't have not seen the fruit. That's why Jesus cannot be seen by the world. The world cannot be able to say explicitly, this is Jesus. Until they see you and I producing the fruit that represent Christ Jesus. That's why Jesus said, by their fruit, you shall know them. By their fruit, you shall know them. So it's so critical. You are somebody, a Christian, a child of God that produces fruit. You must do everything. Your purpose is to produce fruit. Fruit that will replicate the nature, the character of Jesus Christ. There are two kinds of fruits. One is the fruit of righteousness. Talking about the nature of Jesus. The character of Christ. The second one is the fruit of souls. Like a mango tree. We produce the fruit of a mango tree. That when you plant that, that seed, it will produce another mango tree. That's the meaning. So there are two kinds of fruit that God is expecting from you and I. One is the fruit of character. You must be able to demonstrate character, behavioral pattern that can be associated with the character of Jesus Christ. That's why you need to ask yourself anytime T. Will Jesus behave like this? The way I'm behaving now, the way I'm talking now, the way I'm reacting now, could this be the way Jesus would have reacted if he finds himself in a similar situation like this? Because we are supposed to represent Jesus Christ on this planet. That when people see us, they can easily say, this is just, this, these are people representing Christ. So there are two kinds of fruits you bear. One is the fruit of character, demonstrating the character of Jesus. That people will see you and be able to say explicitly, you are, you are a Christian. The other is the fruit of souls, being able to bear fruit, being able to produce somebody that is brought into the kingdom. Being able to influence somebody to come to the awareness of the love of God that was demonstrated at Calvary by Jesus suffering and dying for him and her to bring them into a friendship and a relationship with God Almighty. You must be able to communicate with somebody to let them know the love of God. That they should return back to God in righteousness and holiness. That God will forgive them all their sins. Bring them in alignment with God again. Into that reconciliation. It means getting engaged in the reconciliation ministry. Reconciling the world back to God. For the world have gone astray like you and I went astray. That we were brought back to the bishop and the shepherd of our soul, First Peter two twenty five. Though many have also gone astray, but you and I are supposed to retract them and bring them back to the fellowship. That is your assignment. That's why you are the branch of the vine. So any child of God that is not seriously engaged in fruit bearing is a fake child of God. If bearing fruit is not your utmost passion, then your Christianity is fake. Then you are just religious. 
You are just a church goer. Because the reason why the farmer plants the, the crop is to produce fruit. You were planted by God to produce fruit. So if you are not, if you are not daily passionate about demonstrating characteristics, behavioral pattern that will represent God in your place of work, represent Jesus in your domain of dwelling, represent Jesus as you move around and interact with people, that can, they will see Jesus spilling out from you the way you talk, the way you behave, react to situations and people's attitude. If they cannot see Jesus through you, then you are a failure. Because the purpose is for you to produce fruit that you may reveal Jesus to the world in character. Secondly, heaven is expecting you to produce fruit of your sonship. Except a goat, give birth to a goat. He will not be able to validate his goatship. Because the commandment of God at the beginning has not changed. Be fruitful and multiply. That is Genesis. When man was created, there was a mandate on man, you and I, to be fruitful and to multiply. So if you are not producing fruit, if you are not multiplying, if you are not able to bring other people into the kingdom of God by preaching the gospel of Jesus, by preaching the message of reconciliation, by preaching to them the love that God had for them that was demonstrated through the sufferings and the death of Jesus Christ. That God is calling them to come to a friendship and he will forgive them all their sins and give them a new heart that will help them live and walk in the pathway and purpose of God. That that's the only time they can fulfill their purpose on earth. If you cannot be engaged in bringing people into the kingdom of God, then you are a failure. I pray for everyone listening to me that from today, when you wake up in the morning, your passion should be to produce fruit in character and in reconciling people back to God. People that the devil has snatched. People that the devil has laid hold on using to fill his own demonic agenda. Going out there to retreat people out of darkness, bringing them to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. If these two purposes are not the purposes for which you go out in the morning, then you fail. So every day when you come back home by the end of the day, you assess yourself by the fact and the platform of these two. Fruit, how much did you present Jesus in character? How much were you able to present Jesus as part being able to present the, the price he paid to reconcile people back to the Father? Every day, evaluate yourself. Today, were you able to bear fruit of righteousness? Were you able to bear fruit of souls? Did you produce fruit today? That should be your evaluation. When you are concerned about this, Jesus said all other things shall be added. That is the meaning of Matthew 6, 33. Before that verse, he said, don't be worried about other things. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things shall be added. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Bringing people from the kingdom of darkness, bringing them into the kingdom of God. That should be your first pursuit. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So when you leave home every day, what is your pursuit? If these two are not your pursuit, then you are not yet fulfilling your purpose. All other things that you are pursuing, they are always added. These are the two primary reasons why you go out every morning. What God is expecting you to focus on. To reveal the character of Jesus to the world. And also to be able to bring people into the kingdom of God. If this is not your motivating factor why you are going out, then your purpose is 
is 40. Look at what Jesus said here. How will explain that seriously? I just believe that somebody is catching this explanation. That the purpose for every day is to seek first the kingdom of God, which is bringing people into God's kingdom, and his righteousness, which means walking at righteousness. Walking at holiness. Living to reveal the character of Jesus. Which was, which was revealed in the book of Galatians. Now let's go on. It is very important you catch the two explanations of fruit. Remember, it's a mandate placed on you by God. Be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> if you violate this mandate, the original mandate of God upon you, you are a failure. You will be assessed by God, judged according to the command he gave you. Be fruitful and multiply. To increase you, you are just one, then bring other people into the fold. By now you should be thinking, before Sunday, I must be able to get somebody into the kingdom of God that will follow me to the house of God. People, Christians are not concerned about the kingdom. They are just pursuing their personal agenda. They are just pursuing their personal agenda. They want to succeed. They want to do this. It is in the vision of God that yours emanate. As you pursue God's agenda in living right and getting people into the kingdom of God, that God begin to frame out your own. Without your laboring too tenaciously, God begin to work it out. Connect you to people. Connect you to event, situation. Suddenly bring idea in your mind that will make you move ahead in the fulfillment of your destiny. But first of all, see why that scripture says, seek ye first. The primary pursuit is character revelation. Is revealing the character of Jesus to the world. Remember he said you are the light of the world. You are supposed to shine. Shine for the characteristics of God. What are those? Let me is documented in scripture. Let's go quickly to Galatians. Chapter 5. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. It means every day you begin to express love to everyone you come across. Not hatred, not unforgiving spirit, not anger, not rot. What is love? Love is an attitude. It's a passion. It's a commitment. It's a form of behavior. Deliberately demonstrated for the benefit or the advantage of another without intentionally seeking for a reward or compensation. It's an attitude. It's a form of behavior you demonstrate passionately for the benefit of another without intentionally seeking for a compensation. You don't do it because you want some gain from the person. No. That's love. Now God is expecting you today. As you move out to extend this attitude to those that come across your way. So the fruit of the spirit is love. It's joy. The fruit of the spirit is joy. You must let joy overwhelm you in your heart. It means you are not disturbed by anything. The joy of salvation. Remember the apostles came to Jesus and they were talking about their success story in the missionary work. How they ministered and the sick were healed. Why he celebrated that feat with them. However, he told them where their joy should be anchored. He said rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. Rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. 
So our joy springs from the fact that we are connected to God. We have joy in our spirit because we belong to the Almighty. We have joy in our spirit because our names have been written in the book of life. That no matter how it goes here on earth, we have a home to go someday, sometime. We have joy in our spirit because we are children of the Most High God. We have joy that it doesn't matter how it is right now. Our God can turn it to our goodness and our, our advantage. He said, All things work together for good to them that love God, who are called according to his purpose. That is Romans chapter 8, 28. All things works together for good. So we rejoice because it doesn't matter how it looks like now. It's working for our good. It doesn't matter what we are passing through. It's working for our good. So we have joy because it's going to change. Luke 21, 13 said, It shall turn to us for a testimony. We know whatever we pass through, it will turn for a testimony. It's a matter of time. Just like Joseph was lied on, arrested, put in the prison. But it turned out to become... He had been brought before Pharaoh. He became the prime minister of Egypt. It turns. doesn't matter what you are passing through right now. It will turn. That's why we rejoice. Because we know the problem we are passing through is not our destination. It's going to turn. So we are rejoicing in advance. So as a child of God, you don't let what you are passing through destroy your excitement. Why? Because we know it will turn. Our destination is not destruction. It's not sorrow. It's not failure. God has a plan. He said, I know the thought I think towards you. They are thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You must know this enough that in the midst of the turbulence, you are happy. You have joy. This is the fruit of the spirit. As a child of God, the unbeliever must not see you to be moody. Must not see you crying. Must not see you wailing. Must see you always in joy. Why? Because you know heaven is waiting for you. Why? Because you know you belong to a God who has power to change all circumstances. Why? Because you know this situation is not forever. It has an expiring date. It will turn to my advantage and testimony. You rejoice. This is the fruit of the Spirit that you and I are supposed to demonstrate as a child of God. I pray in the name of the Lord. May God give you grace to begin to produce fruit of the spirit, of love, of joy. Then we see peace in your heart. You have peace. Your heart is not turbulent. It's calm. Because you know you will get to your destination. Long suffering. Tolerating people. Those relating with you, and they are not they are not relating with you in a good way. You, 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 you suffer long waiting for them. Could be called patience also. Patient with people who have not changed. Long suffering. Gentleness. A child of God is not rowdy. It's not rowdy. It's not, you're not a tout. You're not an area boy. There's gentleness associated with that that is born of God. Then we have goodness. We don't plan evil. We plan good towards people. We have faith. Of course, you know what faith is. Confidence. Acting in confidence of what scripture says. Meekness. Teachability. Temperance. It means void of anger and rot. You are temperate. You are not violent. You have self-control. This is the fruit of the Spirit. Now then, these are the things we should be able to demonstrate. Be fruitful and multiply. I dedicate everyone listening to me right now the grace to produce fruit of the Spirit by which people will know you and easily be able to, 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 to describe you as a child that came from God, as someone that was bettered by a holy God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 
Now going back to the book of John. John 15. I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit is taken away. You see? When you are not bearing fruit, you are taken away. That's a very critical statement. <laughs> it, it could mean so many things. It could mean you are taken away from, from it. That could mean death. When you don't bear fruit, God is expecting you to bear fruit. You are not fruitful. It could lead to death. You are taken away from life. It could mean taken away from fellowship with God. Taken away from the vine. You could be taken away from what gave you pleasure. Taken away from your advantages. Taken away from your miracles. Taken away from your successes. Taken away from people who would have been good to you. You are taken away from that association. It's not something you want to experience. Therefore, begin to engage this issue of bearing fruit that you will not be taken away. Every branch in me that beareth no fruit is taken away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. You can see that word purg is an agricultural terminology that means prone, to prone, to remove bad things. If a tree is growing up, then you begin to remove the lower one, the lower branches, so it does not disturb the progression of the growth of the vine. You begin to trim, you begin to trim trim the tree so that the bad one that are fading away, you remove them so they don't keep on consuming the food from the vine. What God means is that anything that will not allow you progress, anything that will want to hinder your effectiveness in fruit bearing, he will begin to cut them away from you. Human beings who are there in your life to intimidate your life so that you will not be able to produce more fruit. Enemies of progress, he will begin to cut them away from you. So that you will be able to have grace to produce more fruit. Things that can hinder your effectiveness in bearing fruit. He said you will begin to trim them out of your life. Activities and whatever that will not allow you to be very good in bearing fruit. He will, he will begin to take them away. When you are involved in fruit bearing, God is also engaged in separating from your life anything that does not that would have intimidated your success story in your soul winning and in your demonstrating godly character you see when you are engaged in fruit bearing the lord is on your side to ensure that nothing hinders the continuation of your agenda of bearing fruit for the master please every day when you go out let this too be primary in your life seek ye first the kingdom of god Bringing people into God's kingdom and also righteousness. When you are engaged in this too, he will add other things. All other things shall be added to you. Matthew 6, 33. Now the next question is, how are we able to bear fruit? You see, he explained the vine and the branch. How does the branch bear fruit? It's by continuously staying in the vine. That's the key. Fruit bearing is not an issue. Of, uh, today, I want to make sure I don't tell lie. I want to make sure I, I, I'm not, I don't have hatred. No, it's not so. It's not that kind of determination. When you plant a tree, the branch automatically produces the fruit on its own. How? By staying in the stock. By staying in the stock. If you pluck away, if you separate the branch, from the vine, that branch will not be able to produce fruit again. That's the reason why many Christians are struggling with holiness. They are trying to be holy, but they are not able to, because the secret of holiness is staying in the consciousness of God's presence. As long as the branch is perpetually stuck to the this, to this, to this stalk, as long as it's conscious of his presence with the tree, the, the fruit will automatically on its own bob out. 
You don't struggle to love if you are connected to Jesus. How? Abiding in him. How? By being conscious of his presence. Knowing that he's with you. He's watching you from heaven. Right now as I'm preaching. He's watching me. His eyes are open. Beholding me. 24-7. He's inside my heart. He's in my surrounding. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That promise must become a reality in your mind. That's what Joseph had. That he was not able to commit adultery, even though he was tempted seriously to be involved. But he refused because he saw God watching him. That's abiding in God. When you abide in God, living in the constant consciousness of the ever-abiding presence of God with you, always conscious is with you, always using your mind to create the consciousness. You cannot behave wrongly. No, it's not possible. Apostle Paul spoke about that in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 17. He said, we are not like others who corrupt the world, who tell lies when they are preaching. He said, but we, we preach as of, as of God in the sight of God. We preach, we preach as if God is watching us. So we don't corrupt the word of God. We don't tell lies, we don't exaggerate. We don't say things that are not because we are sure God is watching us. So living in the consciousness of God's presence is a key to living righteously. It's a key to bearing the fruit of the Spirit. It's a key to living appropriately. You cannot live anyhow when you are sure your Father is right there with you. I want to engage you into this practice that as you leave your home this morning, begin to practice the consciousness of God's presence. That divinity is right inside your heart. He's with you and is watching you from heaven. It helps you to begin to align yourself to holy standard. You don't need to struggle to be holy. Just remember he's here. The master is here. I remember when we were growing up in those days, we lived with an uncle. Pat Thomas is his name. He didn't want us to be playing football. But we love football. He had a big compound by the side of the house. When he goes out, we begin to play football. When he comes and detects that we are playing, we beat us. But he didn't stop us from playing football. We are still playing football. So what did he do? We will be watching. We we'll put somebody to be watching. That when you see his car coming, tell us. We we'll quickly clear the place and leave the and leave the place. When he's at home, we don't play football. But when he's out, we start playing. You see, our character did not change. The only thing that changed, that changed us from playing football is when he is not around. Once he's around, we dare not play football. Once he's around, once we know he's around, we dare not, he will kill us. So what caged us, what prevented us from playing football is his presence, the consciousness of his presence. There was a day when somebody was coming and he blew the horn, like the horn of his pigeon. Ping! Ah! All of us jumped out of the... All of us began to run. It was not the man. It was just the horn that resembled the man. Listen, we are controlled by the consciousness of his presence. When you begin to live daily, knowing that God, the all-seeing God, the God that watches every detail of your life, is right there watching to reward you according to your work shall be. You will know that you need to live. You will know, no one will force you to live right. You remember the story in the book of Acts of the Apostles? How Ananias and Sapphira were lying in God's presence. They fell down and died. You may not fall down and die like that, but something died. When you lie, when you sin, when you live unrighteously, something dies. He said the wages of sin is death. Anytime you live at variance with kingdom principle, you kill some part of your destiny. You kill some miracle that was already coming your way. You kill some opportunity that God was already planning. Anytime you engage in unrighteousness, you kill something. You must know this. You must know this. The wages of sin is the death of something. Stop killing, killing the things, the goodness God have intended for you. Stop killing them. 
Let them manifest that you may see the goodness of God. The secret of living right is knowing that the Lord is there. The secret of living holy is knowing that the Lord is watching. And he will recompense you for all the good you do and also judge you for the evil you do. You must be conscious of that. His presence is there to reward you for goodness and to bring judgment to the wrongs you do. You must be conscious not only of his presence, of the certainty of his reward and the certainty of judgment for any, any action that contravenes the principle of his kingdom. Remember, in the Garden of Eden, the devil tempted Eve by trivializing judgment. He said, don't, don't worry, God will not kill you. He said, lie, you will not die. And they ate it. Don't let, God, don't let the devil deceive you by saying God does not judge your works. He does. It's an eternal principle. Whatsoever a man sow, he shall reap. He that soweth unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. So anytime you live at variance with the principle of holiness and righteousness, something automatically dies. It may be a promotion, it may be a gift that somebody was having in mind to give you. It may be an open door. Something dies. Don't forget this. The wages of sin is death. You may not die physically, but something dies. Something dies. That's why your life is not fulfilled. You wonder, you struggle so much, things are not coming up the way you were. Because you kill some of the things. Why? Because of your character. Something dies. The wages of sin is death. When you commit sin, you are paid salary. The wage, the salary of the sin you committed is that something good dies. A good helper in your life dies. Somebody was nursing the idea to give you something. That idea dies. Something dies. Don't forget what I'm saying now. Don't be deceived by the devil. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. May this preaching refire you up again for holy living. How do you live holy? By knowing that he's around. By knowing that he's with you to bring reward for every good act and to bring judgment upon every evil act. He's there. The same thing with being able to win souls. You will not be able to preach to people if you don't know that the Lord is working with you. That's why believers are not able to win souls today because they don't carry God's consciousness in their mind. They don't carry the consciousness of the presence of the Lord with them as they go out. They easily forget God. They easily forget that he's around. I pray for somebody listening to me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may to, from today, may you begin to be conscious of the ever-abiding presence of God as you go out. As you interact with people, as you do your daily job, may you know of the reality of God's presence. Pastor Isomo Daniel, thank you for being around. You blessed my day on Sunday for those three souls you brought to the church. Please keep on with the fire. That really helped me. I, I we, we discussed it all the way back to we are Liverpool. That, that, that thing really, I mean, that was fantastic. I mean, I, I have, I'm in touch with the three of them and they have showed commitment to keep on coming to church. That's a good one. It's the best thing you ever have done since the church started. Please, let's follow them up so that they are sustained. And apart from sustaining them, let's encourage them also to influence their friends to be around. Thank you so much again. This is the best act of performance since the church in London began about a year ago. Three of them by you alone. Please, let's keep up the fire. This all we owe God. This all we owe God. This all we owe God. This is all that we owe God. To reveal his righteousness to the world. 
and also to bring people into his kingdom. This is all we owe God. The other things are added. Let's quickly go. Let's finish it. He said, and in verse 3, uh, verse 4 of John 15. Verse 4 of John 15. Abide in me and I in you. That's what I'm teaching. Live in the consciousness of God's presence. That's how to abide in God. Abide in me. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. You see, you cannot bear fruit. You cannot bear fruit of yourself. That's why I always say, abide in me and I in you. Jesus is saying, John 15, you cannot bear fruit by yourself. No, you can't bear fruit. Except you abide. It's very clear there. You cannot bear fruit of righteousness. You cannot bear fruit of holiness. You cannot bear fruit of soul winning. Except you abide. It's very, very clear. You cannot, you cannot bear fruit. Please. You cannot. If you don't practice that the God consciousness, if you cannot practice the God consciousness, you can't bear fruit. The secret of bearing fruit is knowing that the Lord is with you. That's this. Once you can practice God's consciousness, it's easy to talk to people about Jesus. It's easy to live right. Look at it there again. He said, abide in me. Abide in me. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Very clear, verse 4 of John 15. You cannot bear fruit of holiness. You cannot bear fruit of righteousness. You cannot bear fruit of soul winning, except you abide. You live in the consciousness that is with you. It's watching me from heaven. It's around me. It's in my heart. When you practice this God's consciousness, it will move you to worshiping him. It will move you to listening to him. It will move you to want to talk to people about him. Verse 5. I am divine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. Whatever you do, that is not a product of living, abiding in God. God call it nothing. No matter what you do, if it's not a product of your walking in the consciousness of God's presence, of your fellowshipping with God, of your doing all you are doing in the strong consciousness that the Lord is there with me. The Lord is watching me from heaven. The Lord is dwelling in my heart. I can feel his presence. Anything you do that is not a product of God's consciousness and fellowship with him in the consciousness. God said he sees all those what you call success as nothing. It's nothing. No value in heaven. No value. He wants all that you do to be produced from this fellowship. He wants every success story, all your achievement, every activity you are involved in to be a product of your awareness of his presence with you. It will keep on provoking you to, to be saying, thank you, Jesus. Because when you remember that he's around, thank you, Jesus. You begin to worship him. You begin to listen to him. You begin to hear his idea dropping thoughts in your heart because you are aligning yourself to the reality of his presence. And he will begin to communicate to you too. It will make you to be asking him questions. And he will answer. You are not asking what fellowship. Fellowship continues because you are aware of his presence. To any time, T, you are, you are praying. That's why Apostle Paul said, pray without ceasing. How can you pray without ceasing? Except by practicing the awareness of his presence. Carrying him along. Living perpetually in the awareness of his ever abiding presence. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Living in that awareness. His mean of praying without ceasing. Living in that awareness of his ever abiding presence and communicating with him because you know he's around and whispering to him and adoring him, worshiping him, thanking him, asking him questions, tilting your ear to see whether he will drop something in your heart. That is the meaning of praying without ceasing. 
without this principle, you can't pray without. Will you lock yourself in one room and keep on praying non stop, non stop, non stop? It's not possible. This is what Paul was suggesting. Pray without ceasing. This is the only way you can pray without ceasing by constantly living in the awareness of God's presence. And look at what he says. Verse 7, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done for you. You see, your prayer becomes effective. When you are living in this abiding in Christ, your request will be easily granted. Verse 8, hearing is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. God is happy when you produce more fruit of righteousness and more fruit of soul winning. So shall you be my disciple. You can't say you are a child of God when you don't bear fruit. What makes you a child of God? Finally, look at verse 16 as we round up with this. Say, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. You see now, the reason why you were called, why you were saved by God, why you were ordained by God is to go and produce fruit. Fruit bearing is the purpose and the agenda of God why he brought you into the family. So if you are not purposed, if you are not determined, if you are not focusing on fruit bearing, you are out of order. You are out of order. The manufacturer of a product write by the instruction manual the purpose of this product. The fan is meant to fan you. If you are trying to use fan to cook, that is abuse. Know what you were created for. You were created to produce fruit. Anything different from that is abuse. He said it there. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. That you should go and bring forth fruit. This New Testament. In the Old Testament, it said, be fruitful and multiply. Fruit bearing is the agenda of God. I dedicate everyone listening to me. May you remember this today. That the fruit bearing is the purpose of God for you. To produce fruit of godly character. To produce fruit of souls. People you will conscript into the kingdom of God. Then he will add other things to you. I declare in the name of Jesus. That you will not depart from this mandate. He said... And that your fruit should remain. We don't only bear fruit. We ensure that the fruit remains. We don't only bring people to the house of God. We follow them up. We ensure that they are constantly coming. We ensure that they don't backslide. We begin to pray and intercede for them. We begin to visit them to ensure that they see a kind of love. We begin to follow them up encourage them, see how we can meet their need as much as possible. That they don't fall away. That they remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Now, on that, on that, on that promise again, when you are involved in soul winning, God is making a promise here that anything you ask him, he will give it to you. I dedicate you to God. That fruit bearing will become your purpose. Will become your pursuit. Will become your passion to demonstrate godly character as frequently as possible to get people. Now, Sunday is coming. Every day you have be walking towards Sunday. How can I get somebody that will follow me to the house of God? How can I get somebody who will be present to serve God with me on Sunday? You begin to move out looking for somebody you will need to speak to about the love of God that will win his heart and turn him to, to, to Jesus Christ. You are preparing for that for, for Sunday. Today, tomorrow, next day, you are walking towards ensuring that there is no, by the grace of God, I must make sure that someone comes to see God, someone comes to the house of God on Sunday because of my effort. When you are desperate to produce fruit like this, God is desperate to also engage in blessing you and giving you your heart desire. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's the end of my message. I take authority right now against the yoke of barrenness. Against the yoke of barrenness. 
every spirit of barrenness that will not allow you to be fruitful in Christ, that will not allow you to be fruitful in soul winning. I bind that spirit and I cast that devil out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I dedicate you with a holy passion. Like Paul said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel of Christ. For necessity is laid on me. I must share the gospel. I pray that the passion to win souls, the passion to reach out to people, to get them into the kingdom, the passion to live right, may that passion be encapsulated in your soul in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. I dedicate everyone to be able to walk in the awareness of God's presence for this to be actualized. And for all those who will engage in this, I declare in the name of the Lord that scripture cannot be broken. God will confirm it in your life that every other thing shall be added. Don't pursue other things. Pursue this. And he will add what you are looking for. He will add what others are pursuing shall be added to you. I declare in the name of Jesus, the Lord that added daily benefits, that load us daily with benefits, will load you today with benefits. I dedicate to God that the goodness that God has programmed into today will be your experience in the name of Jesus. I declare the evil that Satan has prepared for today will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that the decisions you will take today, they will be ones that God orchestrated, that the Holy Ghost orchestrated. You will not make decisions that will, that will destroy your successes. You will not make decisions that will remove your joy. You will not make decisions that will sneak you into sorrow, problems, evil. You will not take any decision that will reduce you. I declare today in the name of Jesus that your decisions shall be right in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For those in Nigeria, I'll be in Nigeria for the National Strategic Prayer Conference in December 28th to 22. Glorious moment of impartation, ministration, and blessings. Of course, you know, the Citywide Crusade is the last few days, last four days of December with the crossover night all happening at Garrick Memorial School Compound, Ekewa Road, opposite University of Benin, Ekewa Campus. However, the Strategic Prayer Conference is happening at the International Headquarters of Believers Ministries Incorporated, number 159-161, Upper Owena, of Ago, of Ekewa Road. Don't miss this year's program. It's purely going to be strong and impactful. Then right here in UK, we have Birmingham Crusade. Birmingham City Crusade is coming up in November 18th and 19th. November 18th and 19th. Birmingham Citywide Crusade where God wants to showcase his lordship, his supernaturality, his love. He wants to bring people into his kingdom and express his love towards them. Minister to the needs of as many as we come. Get prepared for that program. All of you in UK, begin to work out your ticket to the venue. It's going to be an awesome moment. It's number 68, Nineveh Road. It's in Birmingham. B21 0 TE is the postcode. B210 TE is the postcode. Birmingham. God bless you. I love you. Definitely see you again as quickly as God gives me time to do. Bye bye.